Well, here we are in the conclusion to our study in the letter to the Philippians. We're going to answer the questions from chapter 4, verse 21 to 23, and then summarize or try to summarize the letter to the Philippians. So question one, uh, how does Paul encourage unity at the end of the letter? Now, if you remember at the start of the letter in chapter 1, verse 3 to 8, Paul continued to use the word all. I pray for you all. I long for you all. Here in chapter 4, verse 21 to 22, he does the same. He tells them to greet all the believers in Christ as all the believers that are with him are greeting them. He also calls those who are with him uh, brothers, reminding them that they are all family in Christ, brothers and sisters together with God as the Father. The second question was about why Paul mentions Caesar's household. Now, the household of Caesar could refer to servants or guards that worked in the palace. And uh, in chapter 1, verse 12 to 13, Paul had told the Philippians that his imprisonment had led to the spread of the gospel amongst the imperial guard. Here in 4, verse 22, these people are especially excited to greet the Philippians, uh, fellow Roman citizens who have come to Christ. And Paul also mentions them here as a final reminder that God is sovereignly working through the circumstances of his imprisonment to bring people to Christ and just reminding them, hey, God is in control and God is doing good things even through difficult experiences. The third thing was how Paul begins and ends the letter and why. The first word of greeting in this letter is the word grace and the word of farewell is the same. Grace and peace and at the end, uh, the grace of Christ be with your spirit. The entire Christian life is grace. By grace we're saved, by grace we are growing, by grace we are serving, and by grace we will see Jesus, and by grace we will be like him. It is God who has begun and who will finish the good work in us. It is God who is working in us mightily now to produce the fruit of Christ-likeness. The beginning, the middle, and end of the Christian life is all grace. So coming to a summary, trying to conclude this letter to the Philippians and, and summarize it all. So here we go. This is our attempt. In Christ, I am a saint. Chapter 1, verse 1, a holy one. I'm a citizen of heaven. Chapter 1, verse 27. And chapter 3, verse 20. And I'm a child of God. Chapter 2, verse 15. And here's the, the, the pill that's hard to swallow. This is the truth that's hard to um, accept and embrace and live out. Life is not about me. I've been freed from that lie and invited into the reality that life is actually about Jesus Christ. It's about bringing God glory, chapter 1 verse 11 and chapter 4 verse 20. It's about the gospel saving people, chapter 1 verse 12 to 18 and chapter 2 verse 15 to 16. And it's about brothers and sisters growing in their joy and faith, according to chapter 1 verse 24 to 26 and chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 4. So three points. Number one, God is working powerfully in our lives to produce Christ-likeness in us. The result of this is joy, peace, humility, love, patience, generosity, the fruit of the Spirit. Number two, God is working sovereignly through our circumstances, whether good or bad, for the furtherance of the gospel and the building up of other believers. The result of this is people coming to know Christ and growing in him. And number three, God has promised to complete the perfect work that he has begun and is doing in us when Jesus returns. The result of this is that we will be with Christ and we'll be like Christ forever. Therefore, though we can't always change the circumstances we're in, we can rejoice regardless. We can have peace regardless and we can be content regardless. And with that joy, that peace and that contentment, we can then be free from selfishness and we can gladly lay down our lives for Christ by laying down our lives for others. This is how to live as if Jesus has come. Chapter 1 verse 6 and chapter 2 verse 6 to 9. This is how to live as if God is working in us mightily. Chapter 1 verse 9 to 11 and chapter 2 verse 13. And this is how to live as if Jesus is coming again. Chapter 1 verse 6 and chapter 3 verse 20 to 21. I really hope Philippians has been a help to you. I've been so encouraged to, to be in this uh, letter uh, in the middle of our circumstances that we're in right now. And I hope it's been a blessing.